Hi and welcome to the SMA Audio Experience Podcast. It's brought to you by St. Michael San Diego's technology and social media team. St. Michael Academy San Diego is a Catholic school located in the South Bay region of San Diego County. We've been educating students pre-K through 8th grade for over 50 years. On this podcast, we interview and discuss people, organizations, and topics impacting St. Michael Academy and the community around us. When you're here, you're home. Hey, welcome everybody to another episode of the SMA Audio Experience Podcast. We This week, we have a phenomenal guest. It's one of our teachers and a longtime St. Michael San Diego campus uh, contributor, leader, and just a great influencer on campus who has a heart of gold, who has tons of experience and a lot of knowledge, uh, and is just making such a difference to everybody uh, that you know she's been working with, and that she gets to share her story and you know her knowledge with. We have none other than Mrs. Rochelle Quinn on the phone. Were you able to make a call? Hello. Hello. Hey, m- hey, Miss Quinn. Thanks for taking time. Um, out of your lunch break, I know that you know there's a lot of responsibilities from a teacher point of view. But yeah. first off, we want to thank you for taking time out to answer a couple of questions and share a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. Oh, no problem, no problem. For those who haven't met you yet, because you know we we have some listeners who might be prospective parents or people mm-hmm. who are you know um, who come to the church or they're just kind of kind of coming across St. Michael Academy from you know, the website or word of mouth or social media. Uh-huh. Uh, for those who haven't met you, could you share a little bit about yourself? Uh, okay. I am a teacher here at St. Michael Academy. I've been here at St. Michael Academy for, I believe, over 12 years. I've been a music minister first, been serving since 1993 as a choir choir member and, and then choir um, director. I am self-taught pianist. And um, I do love what I do. I have a lot of hats. Yeah, I've been part of this community for a long time. I've, ever since before I joined the ministry, I've been yeah been attending St. Michael's for all probably about most of my life. No, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. I know you know for a while I've you know probably known you for over a decade. You know, and yeah, I, I do vouch for. <laughs> All of our audience and our listeners, I, I do, I can definitely vouch, you know, myself along with uh, a, a big chunk of our, you know, long-term community and our parishioners and everything. You know, know your family, know you, know you, know, you know your brother. Do phenomenal work. You know, you share a lot of time, talents, and treasures, you know, with with our parish and with the community. And you know, one of the things I wanted to get into that I think is very unique, you know, to St. Michael's, and it, I think it's one of those staples is. We have so many uh, choirs, and we we love the arts and music, and I think that manifests itself in one area of the arts is music. Uh, can mm-hmm. can you kind of expand upon like you know your your story or your love for music, where, how that started as a kid, and you know how that you kind of transition that from mm-hmm. you into sharing that with everybody else? Oh sure, okay, um, yes. So I was brought up as a. <laughs> I do love music. I've, I'm one of those kids who used to sleep with a radio in my, right next to my bed. Um, my dad would always play um, music inside the car whenever we'd go road trips and we'd sing all these albums, my brother and I, my whole family. Um, my parents would all, they would be um, involved with choir back in the day. It was called um, Peace and Harmony. And, um, and my brother and I, we joined the Voices of Praise Choir when we were kids. I joined because it was part of one of the requirements for religious ed. And that's when I fell in love with music and becoming a part of a music minister. I realized that 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 joy in sharing their voices um, and being able to sing and being able to bring people closer to God through through singing – I knew that when I was in high school, I wanted to become a choir director, but I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to read music very well. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to be able to to direct the choir somehow, and I it was pretty difficult for me because 
I wasn't, I, I did take some music classes. Mm-hmm. However, it didn't really fully register. Um, as soon as I moved out of um, high school to, to go to college and I started learning some little bit of music, I, I fell in love with playing piano, but I wasn't very fluent with, with it until I moved out to San Diego. That's when I started feeling that fire in me to learn how to play piano. And I started just by playing simple um, church songs that I loved, like mm. uh, one, bread, one, one Bread, One Body, and just simple songs that I was able to sing along and then kind of figure out how to play it. It was really hard. Um, until I moved back and graduated from Sacramento State, I um, decided that maybe I should, you know, start going back into music ministry. Mm-hmm. And I remember one day it was um, Antina Wemi Mungo Singh. She passed mm-hmm. away. Right. Um, she said to me, I visited her after a new mass that St. Michael's had. It mm-hmm. was the 430 mass. And oh, yeah. Yeah, that's and right. I yeah, that. it was way back then. I think it was 2000. <laughs> I think. Yeah, um, I remember that because for so long it was that 12:30 or one o'clock mass time, and then there was that big gap, right? Yes, the big gap. Mass. <laughs> <laughs> and six o'clock mass by itself, <laughs> and then so I came up to her and I and I remember she would just sing by herself, just no piano, just her the you know and her music book and the microphone, and that's it. She would all she would just announce the song. And then mm-hmm. she would say, please sing with me. And entrance preparation, communion recessional, that's it. And I, I came up to her and I said, Auntie, can I help you? Is there a way that I can help you maybe sing? And she said, sure, darling, come next week. And so I said, <laughs> okay. So I came next week to the that mass. She was not there. It was 15 okay. minutes before mass and she never showed up. And I was like, okay, I think I'm going to take this task. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I wanted I wanted to be a choir director, and God said, this is how you're going to do it. <laughs> um, so I I said to the congregation, our entrance hymn is, and that's where it all began. I called her right after Mass, and I said, hey, what happened to you, auntie? Because I thought <laughs> you wanted my help. And she said, oh, um, that is yours, darling. <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah, this is how God works. And um, and I and I I knew at the time that I I had that fire that I mm-hmm. I wanted to be able to share that that love that I have in, within me with this church, but mm-hmm. I didn't know how to do it. And my brother at the time, he I was so jealous of him. He was the he was the person who learned how to play piano by ear, and he had okay. that ear for it. He can just play, and mm-hmm. he he was awesome. Um, and I, and that, that drove me to, to be able to play. So he started playing with our, mm-hmm. with our pseudo group <laughs> at the time. And, <laughs> and that's how we started, um, United in Faith Choir. And, um, through the succession of like pianists of my brother and him moving out and going to college. And then I've had Therese with us and, and, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, I, we were blessed for a while and, and when they could not be able to serve with us, I had, I had to, you know, push myself to be able mm-hmm. to play and direct at the same time downstairs in front of everybody. And it was nerve wracking, um, you know, because there would be days where I would just cry <laughs> in front of the church, um, but hide behind the behind the wall because I didn't <laughs> want to have anybody see me go through this the struggle that I wanted to do, and I, mm-hmm. you know, I loved it. Um, and throughout the years, it just I just developed my faith. It helped me develop my faith in God, helped me pray that rosary. Because mm-hmm. without um, Mother Mary's intercession, um, I wouldn't be here. Without um, without my faith and, and that tenacity that I had to learn um, to play piano and to be able to direct the choir, um, I, I would not, you know, be here without them, without that without the help of them. Mm. And so then I started, yeah, I had United in Faith for a few years, and then um, somehow I ended up becoming a children's choir director. Mm-hmm. And then um, from that, uh, Mr. Humphrey, back in the day, he right. hired me on to be to help out with, um, with the St. Michael Academy. I believe that was 2004. And that's 
that's how it all began. And I started um, with a children's choir there and then children's choir here. And I remember my first day hearing the whole school sing um, mm-hmm. for for SMA Mass. I right. wanted to cry because it's just so beautiful to hear the voices of these children praising and 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 um, you know sharing their voice for for our Lord. You know, it's so beautiful. Um, I wanted. So, yeah, I wanted to be a part of that, and that's how it all grew. That's how it began. Yeah. That's the, that's the yeah. origin story. So yeah. when, when when you pen your autobiography, you know, you, you're you going to go back. You, like, it sounds very clear, you know, like, you know, your 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 origins or some of those 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 moments, like, it's so vivid, like, like it's tattooed into your brain, right, of, like, mm-hmm. those, those things that trigger things. And I want to I wanna dissect a couple of things that you said, you know, in, in mm-hmm. your response there. Because I think it can add value to, um, you know, we we had some uh, like a past some past students like Sean Panato. He was a mm-hmm. previous guest, and you mm-hmm. know, like I, the the one thing where I I want this this podcast or the the stories that we get to hear is um, I want to make sure that the guests that we have on we add value to not just like you know one one or two groups, but um, to show that there's there's that variety that you know the the people who are part of this community are adding a lot of value. So. Yeah. You, like when you when you felt that like that moment when on that four thirty mass where you're like wow I'm I'm just the only one here like what <laughs> how, like where where were you at like how old were you were you still like in college or were you you taking a break or had you graduated yeah. where where were you at in your life at that moment I was yeah I just graduated from college I uh-huh. think I was twenty five years old I think <laughs> okay. I could be a okay. little older as I know it was around that time. And yeah, the, it, it was it was hard. And um, I remember it was it was John Redyke who came up to me, and mm-hmm. he said, "You know, we need to pray the Rosary more often, and mm-hmm. as a group." And so we did pray the Rosary. You know, whoever came to practice, mm-hmm. because it was it was small, um, right. our numbers were small, and we, you know, I said, "Okay, 15 minutes before practice, if you can come, let's pray the Rosary." And Mother Mary just really interceded, and I. And then I, that's where I met Sean and you guys. Mm-hmm. And I right. remember I, I. I don't know if you were part of our choir, but I remember seeing you through amongst a, a bunch of our friends. <laughs> and um, yeah, she just really interceded. Um, and I'm hearing, you know, throughout the years we've we, we've gone caroling, we've gone. We sang for mass. We've had our outings. We've had our movie nights. We'd have. <laughs> there's also drama, but you know that's part of the that's part of the church life um, right. that we have. You know, um, and and uh, it's it's what I love that you know bringing that community together and seeing them grow. Yeah, that's cool. And the see like an interesting like another key point that I think can add a lot of value to like young adults teenagers, even kids and even parents, right? Because they get to see it because, you know, obviously adult parents, you know, no matter if you're really young adults or middle aged or old adults, you know, yeah. um, there's, there's something in going through or learning something that's hard that you, that you're not naturally gifted or talented at. Yeah. But then you, when, when you marry that with a straight up hardcore work ethic, passion and, you understand right. that you really want to drive to doing it, but it's definitely not going to be easy, and it's going to take a long time with a lot of patience. Yeah. That that was that's very interesting in your family, where in I mean I'm I'm sure there's moments where you know there's nat- those natural you know jealousy or things of man why 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 can't I you know play piano or learn like uh, <laughs> learn to sing or a musical instrument or do a certain task or do a job you know easier like a cousin, a brother, a parent, or what have you. But, mm-hmm. you know, the people who are listening, whether you're, uh, you know, in junior high, you're in high school, mm-hmm. a young adult, yeah. or even if you're, you know, a tenured career person, you know, in your field, but you have a passion for something else, there, there's never, um, there, there's never ever a time not to start, right? Because the, exactly. in that story that you shared is you, you were kind of presented with a moment of, well, you knew that you wanted to be something bigger, which was like a choir director, but you didn't know how to get there. But the one yeah. thing where I think everybody gets stuck at is they just never start and try. Yeah, um, yeah. And you like, never know until you try. Right. You know? Regardless of the result. I mean, you know, it, you know whether it's, you know, you, your your voice was cracking or you miscued some keys or what yeah. have you. Um, I think with anything, our, 
ourselves, we're our hardest judge, right? We we, yeah. we tend to really judge or put ourselves down and not realize that, I guess, sometimes, uh, what is it, to, to hear, you know, that perfection or that joy or that success of, oh, yeah, I like how what I've heard from somebody successful, but we forget, like how like your story, we're talking probably over ever since you're a young teenager into your young adult years into your 30s plus, you're talking like <laughs> two plus decades, you've yeah. been honing that skill, right? You know, you've been constantly honing that skill of and growing as a person too, right? I mean, mm-hmm. and that's the thing I think people forget where the, in this day and age where things are usually come, results come faster because of technology or changes in the way we do things yeah. um, or perception. Uh, you're a testament to, you know, that constant, you know, evolution of working, trying new things, making mistakes, understanding yeah. the results, then back at it, right? You know, you're, mm-hmm. you're putting that, putting more effort and investment back into your craft, which happens to be, you know, music and, and teaching and, and sharing a lot of your love, you know, for the community. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's very interesting. Um, now, you obviously, you mentioned you've, you with a choir you've done you know different things over the years like caroling and you know those those are all mm-hmm. different projects so <laughs> yeah like, present day like what are some of the the bigger projects that you're kind of shooting for or doing like what either oh, with school or on campus right now yeah there's so much going on <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah especially with music ministry we have mm-hmm. um yeah we just had our music we had our meeting last night mm-hmm. and um we had to brace ourselves because yeah christmas is coming um, mm-hmm. And we every year we have a concert, and this year we're celebrating our 60th anniversary for St. Michael's itself. Um, so Father Manny had requested us to have a, a, a choral concert featuring a priest, which is cool. Um, we have we have the choirs also involved, all the choirs of St. Michael Academy, St. Michael itself, not the academy, um, but several of our academy members are actually part of this. Um, this choir, our children's choir that's involved in the Sunday Mass. Um, you know, we will be singing two, two combined choir songs uh, okay. by the end of this year, December 29. Um, okay. We will be caroling also to help um, raise funds for the, um, what is it called, the campaign, a capital, the capital campaign, campaign for okay. the parish hall. Um, right. All our choirs are um, well. Several of the, our choirs of our our nine choirs, I believe, in our mm-hmm. in our school, our church, will be caroling um, at home throughout um, the first few weeks of December. Wow. Um, we will be visiting homes and caroling for maybe about a few songs and and vis, you know visit other homes. Um, yes, yeah, that's one of the things that we're going to be doing. We'll also be um, let us see. We'll, we'll also be singing for Sing Bunga Bee Masses, mm-hmm. and um, we have Christmas Eve and Christmas Day Masses. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of songs that we have. We are looking forward to. Also, um, our academy will be visiting convalescent home. Um, oh. and this is with yeah. This is with um, a class at our school um, as a service and just wow. to share what we know and what we have our gift. Mm-hmm. Right. With other people, because it's you know we got to practice our work of mercy as well, right? Um, as not just the outside of the school, but you know not not just here, but outside of the school. I mean to say, right. um, and um, what else are we doing? I guess it's I can't think of anything else. There's there's, there's well, a whole list of activities that yeah we'll be that's, doing. That's I mean, and when I hear what what's great about that is when I hear a lot of a list of things when you hear that excitement and a whole host of things not just people participating in those events like I, and I mean like your, yourself and your the choir members and the and the members of the other choirs but what that mm-hmm. means is it's an opportunity for the the other people in the community or if you're looking if oh, there's definitely. some you know if there's someone looking to volunteer because the one, the one thing I realized over the last two two and a half years of really getting into um, volunteer work is what what's amazing is when when you find yourself lost um, no matter how you got there uh, it's yeah. amazing where when you give of something that's not for yourself, it's one of those, uh, uh, what is that, healing things, I guess you can say. Or <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> it, it actually, you actually get more back. It seems counterintuitive, you know, for mm-hmm. if, if you're not there. But it's definitely something to try. So if there's, yeah. um, you know, people listening to here, you know, we in the show notes of the podcast, 
we can uh, le obviously leave the information, you know, of the school of how to get a hold of the school and obviously in turn with Mrs. Quinn. So if you yeah. do want to help out or, you, you know, you want to get more information about the children's choir, um, you know, maybe you might have children, you know, either who are, who maybe you attend the parish or you're looking to, you have a child who, you know, shows some interest in music. Uh, we can uh -huh. definitely put you in touch with Mrs. Quinn, you know, so yeah. that's, that's, that's an amazing thing because, you know, you, you obviously are exemplifying, you know, you, you know the gift that you're really good at and you'd love to share. Uh, but I know that as um, time goes on, there's just more and more people, children, young adults, teenagers, et cetera, that, mm -hmm. um, you know, they may find, um, you know, they may find a ministry in music or supporting music as, as a way to take themselves to growing into another level, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's very yeah. cool. Um, we're going to, obviously, we we want to be respectful of, you know, your time at school with your schedule and everything. <laughs> uh, the one thing we want to wrap, I, I want to wrap up with is um, if someone asked you, like, if you have a, a favorite uh, church song or you have a favorite, uh, or if we look at your playlist, like in your phone, yeah. do you have a favorite <laughs> uh, name of a playlist, you know, that you're you're really keen on, whether it's church-based or not? You know, is there, have you named a, a playlist that it's just one of those things that it, it's your go-to right now? You know, it's your it's your go-to playlist. A playlist or a song? Uh, either well. one. Uh, either okay. one. Whether you have a go-to song or like a, a the name of a playlist, you don't have to say all the songs on that playlist. Okay. Well, well, once one thing that is sticking out of my head right now is because I I feel like it's bringing a lot of people together, which I really like. Mm -hmm. Is um, this song is called um, Ten Thousand Reasons. Bless the Lord, O My Soul. Okay. Um, it's it's and I don't know if, I'm, if you attend one p.m. mass. A yes. lot. We sing that song a lot in church, and it's just that feeling um, when the choir, our choir especially, when we sing the harmonies mm -hmm. um, and we get together, and the whole church is singing the song. It brings goosebumps to me, oh, and I know I've right heard now. other people <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard that song. It's good. It's yeah. it's really good. You know, it, it gets at you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it was so funny because even last night I had a student. Mm -hmm. um, I and he was he's in your your daughter's class. Um, oh, okay. He asked me. He goes right at the very end because I asked him. I usually ask them at the very end of class. I say, do you have any questions? And he said, mm -hmm. Oh, can can you please play that song Ten Thousand Reasons? Okay. <laughs> and my niece was at my house, my parents' house too. Uh -huh. And I said, Sure. And and right after the whole lesson, I said, Okay, I'll play it. And I started playing it. My niece was talking to my parents and my brother in the other room. I started uh -huh. playing this song. And then she comes walking in, and I said, okay, let's all sing this song. I mean, and it's one of those things that kind of brings the family together. Um, no, that's yeah, cool. Beautiful that's melody, so yeah. Cool. What I'm going to – the one thing for the audience, too, is where, especially as we move into the holiday season, um, we're going to be having some special podcast episodes where that's going to – I'm going to be, you know, requesting of Mrs. Quinn – and some of the other choir directors to get some of the audio from, you know, their choir, their choir's favorite songs like this. And mm. we're going to make a, a mashup or a compilation for this holiday season so that if you want to play this when you're gathered with your family, whether you're traveling or at home, uh, we're going to be gathering that for, for our audience and to give that as, as a value to our listeners. So, okay. um, you know, that's yeah. amazing. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to ask that because the people who attend church or they may be going to another parish or what have you, if yeah. you hear that song, I mean, I pretty much can guarantee you, you know, like a hundred percent that, you know, you'll, you'll definitely, you'll bob your head, you tap your, you tap your foot, you know, you'll move a little bit more because it, you'll just feel it. You know, it's just good. It's just a lot of positive, you know, goodness in it. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, and, you know, with the, with the, with the help of God, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, and from allowing us to, to worship together, to pray together, you know, God brought us here together and we have um you know he gave us our gifts and we have to try our best to share our gifts with whatever he gave us with the with our community that's the way we can shine our light um throughout our community that's amazing yeah. and i couldn't have said it better myself and you know with that i wanted to thank you and uh, show a lot of appreciation for everything that you've done for you know 10 plus years uh, you know, on campus and for yourself and just a lot of the people, you know, that you've touched and, you know, inspired, you know, for being able to, you know, to um, take a lot of the music and the, the talent that you've shown them and, yeah. you know, along with the community and find their way, right, to find yeah. where they're good at, where their talents are, and just to go after it 100%. 
you know, even yeah. when they don't know where they're going or they don't know <laughs> how exactly to get there, uh, they know that I, the first thing you need to do is you just got to start. You just got to go. Yeah. So. <laughs> and believe. And start believe. Start believe and pray. Don't, don't forget to pray because that really, you know, the intercessions of the saints, Mother Mary, mm-hmm. always will be there beside you. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we want to thank everybody for listening to another episode of the SMA Audio Experience. If this episode has given you a lot of value and you you want to share it with somebody, however you listen to it in iTunes or your favorite, you know, podcast uh, station or app, um, you know, share it out. You know, share share it. You can uh, find us on all the channels, and we'll be posting again the show notes of how to contact Mrs. Quinn if you have any questions regarding, you know, the Academy or church music programs or just music in general and you want to drop her a line, uh, yeah, we can go free. ahead and we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and put our contact information there. So thank okay. you again, and we wish everyone a great rest of the week. Have a blessed week, everyone. Thanks again for listening to another episode of the SMA Audio Experience podcast brought to you by St. Michael San Diego's technology and social media team. For more information, go ahead and visit our website at www.smasandiego.org. On Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, we use the common handle or username of SMA San Diego. So you can definitely reach out to us there, leave a tweet, a message, a post, a comment. Uh, We'll be happy to engage with you, answer all your questions, and really join in part of sharing the St. Michael San Diego story on social media and on the internet and also via the podcast. So thanks again for listening. Take care and we'll hear you next week.